everybody. Welcome to this video of myself and Mr. Simon Bates. Hello. We are here to celebrate 20 plus years of the Yamaha 82Z range. Oh, that makes me feel old. It, yeah. Well, it should. <laughs> <laughs> no, so teasing aside, the, yes, 82Z range of Yamaha professional saxophones came out in 2002. Well, the Alto and the Tenor did. The Soprano ta -da, came out in 2011. And we're going to talk about why we love the Zeds mm -hmm. and what's unique about them. And obviously, we've got the Alto, the Tenor and Soprano here. Now, interestingly, Yamaha did bring out an 82 baritone sax, but it is not a Z. It's just an 82 custom. And that is why we do not have the baritone here with us. The Zeds are the Alto, the Tenor and the Soprano. We're going to talk about the alto, the tenor, the differences, some of the spec on them, like I say, some of the finishes that are available. You can see it. Simon's holding the black lacquer alto, which looks very cool. Um, but maybe let's have a good blow uh, on the alto again, Simon, and you can tell us about your thoughts because you were around when these launched, as was I. Yeah, well, I, I, um, and we'll talk I did all actually about launch. You the launched 82. one. Yes. Yes, exactly. We'll talk yeah. all about that as well. So. <laughs> launched several different models of the, uh, the 82. So. Uh, yeah. Yes, and, and had consultations, so uh, I liked the metal resonators and they put them on. I don't know whether that's because I liked them or everybody else did, but... Uh, in spite of you liking yes, them, indeed. they went with it. <laughs> so we'll talk about all of that. Cool. I'm glad you went for it because it's a Z. That's yeah. what they should. That's oh, what we should yeah, be yeah, doing yeah. on it, right? Yeah. I mean, what Yamaha have this habit of saying, "Oh, the, the 875 is a classical saxophone, and this is the jazz saxophone." I think you know, a saxophone is a saxophone. It's kind of the way you know you, you approach it, which which really counts. But um, this was developed, you know, in, in conjunction with the, the, the famous saxophone player Phil Woods mm -hmm. to be a jazz instrument. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love it. Personally, I think they sit for me somewhere between the 62 and the, the 875. Um, I know a lot of pros play these. Uh, the reason being is because there's a lot of features uh, that the 62 has that the 875 doesn't, like the adjustable key um, screws and things like that, yeah, uh, which, which are you know, a, a great addition. I really wish they'd put them on the, the 8, 875, but they haven't. Um, and um, you know, they're, they're great saxophones. They, they, they're bright, they're brash, they're bold, um, and, and, and kind of, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll, I'll let you into a little secret. I actually have metal resonated pads yes. put on by, by Yamaha on my, my 875 to make it sound a little more like an 82. Yeah. Uh, now the reason for that basically is because I love the sound of the 82, but I just slightly prefer the, the balance and the, the, the weight and the and the, um, the, layout. the kind of the layout and, and, and the, the, the richness of the 875. So mm. that combination for me of, of you know sort of an 82 setup on an 875 is perfect. But mm. these you know unless you're a Yamaha artist, you're probably not, not going to persuade them to do that. Uh, you'll have to go to Dorks and get it repadded. Exactly. Um, if you've got an 875 and you want to sound like an 82Z. Anyway, I digress. You know the, these are fantastic horns. Um, you know, beautifully made. Uh, I mean, this particular one in, in black lacquer looks so stunning. It's not true. It's really lovely. Let's hit some of the tech. So Simon's already mentioned that they do have metal resonators on the pads, and they do that to aid the brilliance, the vibrancy of the sound. And in general, the Zs feel, I think, I think the most alive of, of all modern saxophones, let alone Yamaha. I really, mm. really love these saxophones. Um, one piece bell so that is hand hammered in the factory in Japan, one piece. Lots of bells and saxophones are two piece that are cast separately and then put together and soldered. This is a one piece bit of sheet brass that's shaped and hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered. And you know when they know it's ready, they listen. They hear the brass Ding. change as they're hitting it. It's amazing, it's amazing. Yeah. I've been very lucky to see that. And I know yeah, Simon, me too. Yeah. you've seen that as well. So one piece bell and both the customs, so the 82 and the 875, have a special alloy brass that they use, which is not used on any other Yamaha saxophone, which has the ultimate uh, resonance, shall we say. Adjustable front F, uh, which means you can change the vent and the, the 
the feel on, on that for, so from an intonation point of view. Mm -hmm. And generally under the hands, they feel super, super comfortable. So from a tech point of view, basically Yamaha put everything into this and the 875, but we're here to talk about the ATZs today. This is the latest iterant, which has the V1 necks. They didn't launch with the V1s back in 2002. No, well, the V1's a fairly new neck anyway. I think yeah. that was, it was around the time they, they brought the, uh, the Atelier model of the 82Z out. They also brought out the V1 neck. They did. Um, and, and they took that around to various players, didn't they? And yeah. And Dorsey's and said, try a few necks and see what you think. And, mm. Yeah. And that's what I play now. Yeah, yeah. So the V1 was universally chosen yeah. by, by oh, players. Yeah. And was, I think yeah. that's because it's the largest bore taper. So that means you can basically shovel the most air through it and it gives you the biggest sound back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the only thing is you have to be on top of that. From an intonation point of view, it's got the widest zone, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, But these are for the players. Players, you know, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, yeah, you know, no, I don't think so. If you, you know... Uh, the, these are pro saxophones. Obviously, there's plenty of semi-pros who, who use these uh, yeah. as, as well. But, you know, um, I do, uh, I have come across somebody who moaned about the intonation on it and I kind of played the same saxophone and said, right, let's have a look. And, and it was absolutely fine for me. Yeah. So you do have to consider the, the intonation. Yeah. All saxophones are a little bit of an imperfect thing anyway. You know, you need to l use your lip, you need to use your, your ear yeah. um, to, to tune them because, um, you know, that's the, it's one of the quirks of, of the instrument. That's why we use vibrato, people. <laughs> um, well, but, yes, that's true. And yeah, nothing's ever going to be bang all the way down. If it is, they'd kill whatever was left of the soul of the instrument anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've got the tenor and the soprano here. Let's have a listen mm -hmm. to them because I think as a set, and this is why I wanted to do them as a set, there's something really special that runs through that whole Z range. Yes. Um, and if you were a player, obviously lots of saxophone players you end up with an alto with a tenor, tenor and soprano, whatever it might be, you often end up with more than just one saxophone. It's good. Keep, keep buying them, everyone. <laughs> um, but yes. I think if you have a pair of Zs, that is a really cool setup to have. And hopefully we're going to hear the character. Let's jump to the tenor next. We'll hear the character of the tenor because it's suited to tenor and they've designed the alto to be suited to alto if that makes any sense we'll elaborate yeah, yeah. i know exactly what you mean yeah in a moment all right we'll be yeah. right back with the tenor and we'll see what we think about that So it's lively, but it, yeah. well, but it can do gentle. It can it do can gentle, do but I mean, it does. It does make me want to play in a certain way, you know. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it, you know, obviously you can have different characteristics with a different mouthpiece as well. You know, I'm mm. using my Jody Jazz Jet, which is a bright mouthpiece. Yeah, I like to play bright. You know, I've just been playing at a blues festival where, yes. you know, if you kind of <laughs> you'd be laughed off stage. You know, it, it it really is angry, kind of. You know, I'm, oh. I woke up this morning and, ah! yeah. um, but you know, but, so this horn is is really really great for that sort of music. You know, yeah. that's what. But, I mean, it, we've, we've said before that, you know, when I play an instrument, often you know you can kind of tell the style of music that I want to play on it by by what I play. Well, yes. you know, I kind of yeah. just automatically um, go in that direction. You know, and, and yeah. with this, it is you know. It's, uh, You know, it's that kind of angry, wah, that I want to do on it. But, you know. You know, it'll do, yeah. do that as well. And, you know. They, they can do Classical anything. if you want. If you really want to play tenor, classical tenor. Um, Don't do it, people. Don't do it. It's not good. Uh, sorry, sorry, Alistair. I can't. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to think of. A, a We're going off piece, Simon. We're going off piece. <laughs> yeah. So okay. But let, let's just talk about the fact alto and tenor. And I mentioned before. They, mm -hmm. I think they've they suit the characteristics, don't they? So with a tenor, you want something slightly different than you want out of an alto. Yes. Don't you? Oh yeah, you know, yeah. In terms of that bootiness, that that bottom end richness. Of oh, well. of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you, it, it, I mean, you've really got the sonority down right at the bottom that, that that you want with this, and a nice evenness in tone that you, you do have on the alto as well. But it's kind of um, that the alto possibly is a little more polite than the tenor. You know, the tenor's mm. more of an angry old 
bloke's instrument. I was going to say yeah, angry young man, but I haven't been no. a young man for a long time. <laughs> if but, only. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, we should point out, as, as I think we did at the very beginning, these are available in different finishes. The black is quite popular, just standard gold lacquer. And they do an unlacquered, which out of the box just looks like a normal lacquered one. It's not a crazy vintage look like mm. some brands. But over time, as the air gets to it, as your perspiration from your fingers gets to it, they, they start to look really great. I've seen a few, you, yeah. you have as well, four or five years old that look properly vintage, nicely Absolutely. unlacquered. Yeah, don't yeah. They? And then in a hundred years, they go green and, and funk yeah. a bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we'll be doing a video on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I might, he won't. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> so, okay, well, there we go. That's, that's a bit of the tenor. We wanted to uh, play you both back to back, but we're going to finish with the jewel in the crown, I actually personally believe, of the Z range, which is the Soprano. Oh. Obviously, these two are great saxophones, as we've pointed out, but the, the Soprano is quite different to the 875, yeah, and it's quite different definitely. to a lot of other instruments out there, and there's two variants of it, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. There it is, that's the soprano, everyone. So this is the H2Z straight soprano, and they do a version with an integral but curved, slight curve on the neck, don't they, which is the they H2Z do, yeah. R. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a normal curved necker, aren't you? So I do am, you prefer yes. the curved version slightly? I do slightly, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a comfort thing. and uh, the, There's no doubt that the sound of the straight neck is slightly brighter mm. because you're, you know, you're, you're blowing through and it, you, 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 there's no resistance at all. Um, I just slightly prefer the, the position and actually, um, you may have noticed with this, I was holding it out, not, um, not using the, the, the sling because mm. actually when you're holding an instrument like that, it's not going to do much. Um, and um, I do prefer perhaps to play the instrument a little further down. With, with, but, you know, the all-important thing is the angle of the mouthpiece. Um, I think, have, however, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you, you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. There's, there's, there's two ways of, of, of looking at it. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the 875, uh, uh, sorry, the 82... ZR mm -hmm. uh, is is a great saxophone as well, but it's slightly mellow, mellower. If you want the real bright, brash nastiness of, of the 82Z, then this is probably the model to get. Yeah, and we've mentioned it's a one piece. The 875 is two, two. so mm -hmm. there's the neck separately. But this is based on the L6 series um, sopranos that Yamaha used to make, which are very popular. And that those were based on the Selma Mark VI. I'm allowed to say that. Um, well, now, they, yeah, but they weren't really based on the Mark VI Soprano, were they? Well, not not in the layout. Yes, no. yes, in the bore, not on the keywork. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, the the, the the reason I point that out is because the the Mark VI had this very strange kind of flat palm key type thing, very difficult to play. I mean, I loved playing my Mark VI back in the day, but yeah. really, what turned me onto Yamaha as a as a brand in the first place was playing their Sopranos, and it was like. Ah, so this is like playing a saxophone rather than playing a Selma Mark VI soprano. Yeah. Which was an instrument all on its own. From so, the devil. Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of. I had a bad, <laughs> not, a quite, bad Mark VI soprano vibes over here. Yeah, I mean, Sorry, not, not, not quite that bad. But, you know, I, what I love so much about the Yamaha Sopranos is they feel like a saxophone. And yeah. that's, that's really important, I think, for, for you know, when you, when you play the saxophone. You know, you want to swap from one to the other if you're doubling. You don't want to have to kind of completely reset and readjust. Even though I was playing a Mark VI alto tenor and soprano, when you go from one to the other, you've got to really change your mindset. With the, whereas when you're with the Yamahas, you pick it up and it's a Yamaha, the keys are in the same place and everything feels nice. Okay, your hands are slightly closer together because you're playing a soprano rather than an alto, but basically it feels the same. Yeah. You know? and, and, you know, even though the... Um, the fork key at the top is slightly smaller on the soprano. It still functions in the same way. You know, you just just move your finger and, and there it is. You don't have to. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's comfortable. You know, it's, everything it? is comfortable on this. Yeah. You know, it, uh, the key work is absolutely magnificent. Yeah, intonation is great on the Zs as well, especially the, the, the straight one, even more so in a way. But I think this is a great point you just made, Simon. If you look at it as a range, and you're really looking at serious saxophones. They're hard to beat if you play, mm. especially if you play two or three models, alto, tenor, soprano, whatever. You know that as a setup is killer. You know yeah. it really is. And it okay, is, the, yeah, yeah. And the eight seven five would be the other option. Uh, Selma, yes, no. So the series two, 
as it was and the Supreme Alto and Tenor are quite different instruments. So I mm. think if you're looking to put together a serious arsenal of kit to play as a professional user, playing all sorts of stuff, as you do, uh, blues thing over the weekend, you'll be doing something else tomorrow, you know, mm. you just need the stuff that's going to work, pick up, go, you know, be bang in tune, have a great sound yeah. and yeah, keep yeah. working. And I would say, and this is why I wanted to do this video, after 20 years, this, I can promise you, is the Zeds would be a great place to start that conversation for yourself. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we could do the same video on the 875 as well. Um, but, yeah, no, you're, you're, you're perfectly right. The, the, the 82s are, I mean, they're, they're great horns, very well made. Um, and just, yeah, just to respond really well, you know, particularly from a, a, a jazz point of view. Yeah. Not to say you, you can't play classically on an 82Z, you know, but... Um, from the, the jazz pop uh, and that sort of thing, they are, for me, the, the, the king of the saxophone. There we go. I can't beat that. King of the saxophone. So, could you play us out, Prince of the Saxophone? <laughs> I could try. <laughs> right, do you want some Kenny? No. no. <laughs>